Hey, Cy here from Music Radar. Today I'm joined by Cy Truss, editor of Future Music Magazine. And today we're taking a look at the brand new Electron Digitact. Yep, so Digitact is the new sample-based drum machine groove box from Electron, a mm -hmm. Swedish outfit, mm -hmm. best known for their analog range probably. Most recently. And then most yeah. recently, and then further back, the um, machine drum yep. and yep. various other Modern kind machine, of- machine, all that stuff. Very, yep. Various other kind of cool groove boxy, mm -hmm. Synthy products. Digitact is the latest. As the name suggests, it is a breakaway from their recent analog range in yes. that it's all digital. Mm -hmm. um, it is a sampling drum machine. So what you've got in here is eight sample channels, mm -hmm. um, all of which start with a sample, then yeah. take that through a filter, amp envelope, um, there's overdrive built in, mm -hmm. bit crushing, uh, delay and reverb sends, LFO per channel, and basically use all of that to build Beats and grooves. Yep. Let's have a listen to some of the presets then, and um, um, and then go through all the different sort of parts of the sound engine. Okay, cool. And we can look at what it can do and how you can tweak it all up. So we'll just hit play. Um, these, everything that we're going to hear now, are basically the preset patterns and sounds yep. that come within the box. Cool. Um, so just hit play. Mm -hmm. So, like we said, we've got eight channels of sampling along yep. here, um, each of which has several sections within the sound engine. Mm -hmm. So in the in the source section here, we can do things like. Uh, change the source sample. Yeah. Um, then we've got kind of your standard sampling, tweaking things like um, tuning. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we can mess around with sam sample start, length, positions, uh, the kind of mode of play, so we can kind of loop up samples. Mm -hmm. uh, a bit of bit crushing. So that's the source uh, section. That's the source section. Let's just take. Let's take a look at the filter section then. Yeah, let's load up another preset pattern and some new sounds just so we can hear them. Okay. Um, so, like I said, we've got filter on every one of our channels. So let's select a track. Uh, it's a multi-mode filter. Mm -hmm. So meaning that we've got kind of high pass uh, and low pass modes yeah. with resonance. Quickly bypass that as well. So you can just turn it off. And it's yeah, so you can turn turn the filter off, uh, and then you've got high pass and low pass modes for each of your channels. Okay, cool. Uh, Moving on to the next one. Take a listen to another sound and look at another bit. Yeah, so we go uh, to amp next, shall we? Yeah, so the amp modes, uh, as you'd expect, amp envelope. Also, where you have your sends. So every so the um, detect has reverb and delay sends. Yeah. So you can dial in reverb and delay per track. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you also have in these sub menus separate windows for controlling the reverb and delay themselves. Uh, reverb and delay both have high and low pass filters on them. Yep. Uh, the delay also has a reverb send, so you can send the delay out to the reverb. Oh, reverb very nice. Um, obviously, it's got time control, got ping pong on off mode. Okay, yeah. Width control, delay feedback, again high pass, low pass. So it's quite in depth. So yeah, it? there's quite a lot yeah. per channel. So um, the final part along here is the LFO. The LFO. Let's load up. Yet another yet one. Another sound. So yeah. we can just have a little hiff. Um, so the LFO. Each um, drum channel has an LFO. List of destinations we can send. So from sample tuning to uh, filter, amp envelope, um, our effect sends. So let's just set a one to go to the um, sample tune, which is proving a little bit fiddly. There it is. There we go. Hit it. You can hear the track is 
assuming to be modulated by the LFO. Yeah, cool. Cool. So alongside the um, eight channels themselves, there's loads of other kind of things on board. You've also got another eight channels on the bottom here. So that's these are, MIDI, right? Yeah, these are MIDI channels. So what okay. these do is send MIDI triggers. So each um, of these eight channels can be set to trigger up to four notes. Okay. So essentially what you can do is kind of lay eight four note chords yep. across these if you want, yep. and then kind of hook a hardware synth or yep. um, a plug-in or something up yep. through the outputs here, mm -hmm. um, and have that controlled by GDSAC. You can have, obviously, you can control more than one thing at once, of depending on what your kind of MIDI setup is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's enough, there's enough I.O. there for yeah, that to I. be flexible. Yeah, I.O.-wise, well, I.O.-wise, we've got MIDI in, MIDI out, and MIDI through. Yeah. Um, out and through both can work as sync ports. Okay. Um, so you can send uh, DIN sync messages. Yeah, yeah. Um, then we've got USB port, which you can use to hook up to a laptop or Host. computer. Yeah. And um, does USB and you, over MIDI? Yes, you can do MIDI. Over USB there. even? The other way around? Yeah. Never get that right. Uh, then audio-wise, we've got... Um, our main outputs over here, then yep. we've got uh, inputs as well. Mm -hmm. So inputs is because the Digitac can obviously sample as yes. well. So everything we've been playing with so far has been a um, preloaded yep. pre sample. Yep. A lot of the fun obviously comes from loading in your own sounds. Doing your own thing, uh, which so, we're going to do right now. Yeah, so let's load up a project we've just been messing around with. Okay. Um, this is literally a really simple um, little kind of Techno beat we've okay. got going at the moment. Let's have a listen to Yeah. So that's what you sampled so far. Yeah. So this is um, just a few samples we've got going on at the moment. Yeah. And so none of that's from the inbuilt um, samples. This is all stuff you've put in. This is just stuff we've yeah. messed around okay. sampling okay. earlier today. So let's show us. So let's sample something. Another, yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's, let's add sample. an extra track. So yeah. we'll go on to where well, the tracks are not used so far. So we got so far we've gone to track seven here. Yeah. We've got our um, teenage engineering PO for something really simple and basic to sample. Yeah. We're going to hit sampling here, uh -huh. um, and what we can do is, uh, you see, we've got options. We can monitor our input. We've got a kind of threshold so we can do basically triggered samples so that an input signal will trigger the recording, which we're mm -hmm. going to use. Um, we'll hit yes to arm. And let's just hit a clicky noise off of, there we go. Got it recorded. All right. There we go, nice little click. Um, so we like that. What we can do is just hit save, uh, name it as, so, click. There we go. Um, Expert keysmanship there, sir. I know, I've done this before. <laughs> um, then we can assign it to a track. So we'll assign it to track seven. Yeah. And now, if we go out of our um, sampling window, mm -hmm. so we're back. We've just got that. Okay. So it's got quite quite a length on it, so you can trim it up here. Yeah. So I could trim that down. I'm just going to use it as one shot, so yep. we don't, don't need to do that. Don't worry about that. I loops. could also obviously loop it up. Um, can reverse it. Mm -hmm. Can play around with yep. the start point. Yeah. Things like that. Um, we'll just leave it as a simple little click for now. Okay. So. Uh, this naturally can be used as a step sequencer. Okay, yeah. You can also live record um, sounds into it. So let's step sequence some hits for the moment. Yeah. Step sequence, we just hit record. Uh -huh. um, and now what we can do is just input some notes like uh -huh. that. You can see we've now got that. Uh, let's send it to a bit of reverb. Um, we can play around with the pan. Obviously, we can filter that bit. How many step sequencing can we so, have all together? Uh, we can have up to um, 64 steps. Okay. So but we're basically we're going to use all of these pages we can Yeah, so practice. at the moment, we're just using one page. Mm -hmm. What we can do is, um, using the page button here, we can increase the S number of steps. Yeah. Okay. So let's just increase it to 32 steps. Um, what we've done there is we've just basically doubled our pattern, so yep. we've now got a 32 step mm -hmm. sequence. One cool thing we can do is we don't have to have the same amount of steps on every channel. Okay. So if you want to get some polyrhythms going, we can set each uh, drum track to have a different length sequence. So yep. let's try doing that with yep. that little clicking noise we've just put okay. in. So if we go back to our pattern length page and then hold uh, function and yes, and that gives us a per track um, length 
and we can trim let's trim our clicking noise right down to 12 steps so it'll have a nice little polyrhythmic thing yeah, going on yeah um, and now if we hit play yeah. you can see that Oops. is so we've got a little polyrhythmic yeah. thing going on um, so there's lots of other cool little things you can do in here. Um, you can do re-triggers, so if we go onto our snare, for example, uh -huh. um, we can uh, set the, hit the re-trigger button here, um, and if we play so we can hear that sounds. You can hear our snares now having kind of re-triggery rolls. Yeah. Um, and you'll notice that I'm doing that by holding down a step and tweaking parameters. So yeah. step sequencing, we can um, edit pretty much all the parameters on a per step basis. Can also record automation. Yeah. So um, so there's kind of parameter locks on for pretty much everything on here. Yeah. Um, which is very cool. So, for example, let's go back. Let's stick with this snare. Um, so this is I'll do a little example of the kind of live recording as well. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Um, so, we'll stick with our snare. Uh, let's get rid of that re trigger one for a moment. Get rid of that re trigger. Um, so, if we want to do live recording, we just hold down and record and hit play. Hit play. And now we can start nice. going. So, not that I haven't quantized that. No. So. Sure, so you, you've got it on free, but you can you yeah. can set up quantize if you want. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's live recording. Yeah. Show us a bit of um, you know, recording some automation okay, on cool. some parameters. Uh, so let's just hit play. Yeah. So let's go with our little clicking noise that we recorded a minute ago. Uh -huh. um, again, we to enter live recording mode, hold down that, hit play. Yeah. And now we can just. Okay. Just. So anything at the moment is. You can just hit into any um any section, start tweaking, and it's yeah. And yeah, um, we can as long as you're armed. Let's um, do the same with let's know uh, filter sweep. So yeah, and we've just kind of recorded some yeah little parameter sweeps. Um, okay. Okay, so recording automation, brilliant, we like that. Yep. And like you say, you can control, you know, outboard MIDI stuff. Um, yep. Talking of control, of course, Electron products have been uh, gifted the the grand scheme of overbridge connectivity yep. with the last sort of iteration of uh, products. Digitact is no different, Yep. So, but it is different in one way. It is slightly different, yeah. yeah. So overbridge is, um, like you said, it's their um, interfacing platform for yep. working, uh, basically it means that all Electron products can kind of function like a plugin in a DAW. Yep. Uh, and Electron, an audio interface. Yeah, and an audio interface. Yep. Digitact is quite, is a little bit different in that um, it, for the first time there's two levels of mm. Overbridge um, functionality. There's the free um, basic Overbridge for Digitact, which basically acts as a sample librarian okay. um, and does some audio streaming. It's worth saying that we haven't got our hands on the latest version of Overbridge yet, so we this haven't is, been able to use This is early Digitact. doors product here, so we are yet to receive. So this is all a bit speculative. No. Yeah. From, what, what, from what they've the told us, from what they've told us, yeah. um, you can do some audio streaming over USB, yeah. but I think it's time limited. Yes. And then there is a premium version of uh -huh. um, Overbridge, which gives you a full kind of plug-in style editing. Yes. Um, full audio track recording. It's basically the overbridge that we know from yeah. previous um, products. Yeah. Um, so, A, bit of a shame. That's I, I know they're trying to drive the cost down of, of this compared to their previous products, which is fine, they have. But not to have to, to pay for overbridge sounds like a bit of a cheap shot. Yeah, I mean, well. To me, anyway. <laughs> there, It's obviously kind of a an exercise in trying to keep the price down, which yeah. is, you know, it's fine. It's not the only product in the world that, um, We'll sell an audio editor separately. It's uh, from from my point of view, I don't see any user 
buying this and not wanting the functionality that comes in the kind of premium overbridge yeah. because it gives you such tight um, DAW. Because if anyone's used overbridge before with other electrical products, uh, it does work very nicely. Yes. We've been impressed with it in the past. Yeah. It gives you kind of largely unrivaled kind of door um, hardware synergy. Yeah, like, um, we, do, we do like that a lot. And like, yeah. like we said, it gives you kind of full multi-track audio uh -huh. streaming over USB, yeah, yeah. those things. And there's kind of that sort of functionality that I can't imagine anyone who spends the money on Digitax isn't going to want. So you should probably factor. I think the premium overbridge is 79 euros, I think. Yes, let's talk about price. Yep. So the hardware itself, £659. Yep. And like we say, doubled up with overbridge, €79. Euros. Yeah, and I, it's, I just kind of personally, I would say, just includes that A yeah. If you're going to buy it, just know you, you're going to need the full premium I, overbridge. Personally, I don't think there's yeah. any point in getting this unless you're going to exactly. sell it on the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, we, we've used Written before, and the overbridge um, connectivity with that... Uh, it just opens it up. It just makes yeah. so much more sense of the unit itself. Again, it? it's worth saying we haven't actually tried Overridge with Digitax. So this is all kind of speculative based on Overridge we've used in the past. Yes. Um, there's also other stuff we haven't had a chance to try. So um, Overbridge is required. The basic free version of Overbridge is required to load sound into Digitax. Okay. Um, other than the kind of recording uh -huh. like we've been doing. Yeah. Um, well, that's this, the Drive Plus. Yeah, Electron products use Drive Plus. It's one of my kind of early slight bugbears with Digitax is that it would be nice to have a USB port or SD card port that we could load sounds in, uh -huh. like we do on things like MPC and stuff like that. Yeah, direct um, straight in, no, no host machine. Yeah, so if yeah. you want to load your own sounds without recording, you do need to hook it up to a laptop, which is yep. a bit of a shame. Mm -hmm. um, but we haven't, I can't really comment on how that works. We haven't had a chance yeah. to try that yet. Um, the other thing it's worth saying about Digitax is, um, as is the case with a lot of Electron products, and people will probably realize this if they've used Electron stuff before, it is quite deep and not necessarily the most instantly uh, intuitive machine. No, their learning curve is unique to their uh, their ecosystem, the workflow of the Electron products. Yeah, which isn't necessarily a criticism. No, 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 I no. Basically, I just always find it's just different to whenever, a lot of other products. Whenever I get a new bit of Electron gear in the office, um, we always go through the same thing, which is, you try and use it without reading the manual. Yeah, you you'll spend ages going like, why do doesn't it do this? Why doesn't it do this? It's really annoying. Yeah. Eventually you'll read the manual, work out how it does it and be like, oh no. yeah, that does it. And it does it in a really good way. And actually this works yeah. quite well. But there is a lot of reading up to do to get to that point. Yeah. Um, and you kind of need to spend a lot of time getting to that headspace. Because of that, I also kind of feel, although we've had Digitax in the office for um, a good week now, mm -hmm. and we've been spending quite a bit of time with it, I probably wouldn't say I'm quite up to speed to make a proper call on what we think of it yet. Yeah. So, so we're still early days in, in how we we're, feel we're about early, it. We haven't actually had Overbridge yet. So this is this is very much a sort of first look. You yeah. Know, so you can see uh, from you know, us playing around, it. Yeah. Um, it can do a lot of cool things. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice sound engine. Uh, obviously, it's digital compared to analog. Yeah. I don't think that's a problem. I think the digital sound engine sounds nice. Um, the overdrive, which you, is where you might think kind of, oh, digital compared to the old analog stuff, still sounds pretty decent. Yeah. Um, you've got nice bit crush things for kind of proper digital style yeah. crunchiness. Um, and yeah, you can do a lot. Eight channels arguably isn't that much for um, a machine this price, but they are. there's a lot of depth to each of these drum channels. When we talk about price and electron products, the fact that they've come in with a fully featured instrument yeah, half, roughly half the price of yep. their previous analog products. That in itself is a quite quite a good good feat for them, I believe. Um, yeah, they've they've done that in a, in a variety of ways. Obviously, the form factor is smaller. Yeah, it's like your analog heat box, basically the same size analog yep. heat. Yeah, we notice the encoders do feel a bit less resistant and less premium feeling as the yeah the you, analog. You spend more time with like analog resonance, I think like that, yeah. and you you. It's not, you know, it's not hugely different, but yeah. I'm just, it's noticeable. Um, and, I mean, these are push-button controls as opposed to pad controls, yeah. which we quite like on this. I thing. quite like these. Yeah. We were having a discussion about these yesterday, yeah. weren't we? And it does, I was playing around with this in the office, and it does... Sound like he's typing on yeah, a typewriter. Yeah, if you've got headphones on, it just sounds like <laughs> yeah. you're typing just away. Word but, processing, um, yeah. But yeah, so, conclusion is a 
positive one. Yes. We do really like it, but uh, not quite experienced enough without the kind of overbridge stuff and a bit more time with it to say for definite. Yeah. Um, despite, yeah, like I say, the, the, the price is, yeah. is keen for an Electron product. Yep. It's still premium for the market. Yep. Um, the sticking point for me, I think, is overbridge premium. Yeah. You know, an extra feature and an extra cost there. Um, I'd love it if it was just the same as before. Um, but like say, you know, as soon as we get it, I'm sure we'll be, our minds may be changed when we actually have a play with that for, for real. And yep. and hopefully we'll, uh, yeah, we'll get to have a proper good old run around with this thing. So A tentative thumbs up. Okay, so that's it in a nutshell. Um, hopefully that kind of gives you a brief idea on what uh, Digitact is all about so far. Um, please do like, comment, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And uh, check out musicradar.com for all the latest news, reviews and tutorials. Cheers.